Okay, we are live. Yay! Welcome. Oh my gosh, it feels like it has been so long since the last time I've done a YouTube live stream. Like, I don't even remember the last time. So, I'm so excited to be here. Welcome, 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 everyone. As you are joining, say hello. Let me know that you're here. Let me know how you're doing. And we are going to jump into the topic for today's conversation. This is something that I think all of us go through. And I want you to let me know in the chat or if you're watching this on the replay, you can post it in the comments below. But I want you to tell me if you have, I mean, I know that we've all gone through challenges. So it's not even that, that's not even the question. Not the fact that we've all gone through challenges, but more so in those challenges, in those times of challenging moments, struggles, like those kinds of situations, have you ever felt just completely defeated? Have you ever felt completely just like, I want to give up right now. <laughs> like, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. Like, what's the point of this? Why do I even bother, <laughs> right? Like, who has ever felt that? Like, I felt that. I literally felt that, like, yesterday. <laughs> um, so we all go through that. And I think that this is such an important topic. Um, yeah, currently in this space, yes, yes, I hear you. I, I lived through, like, a mini moment of that yesterday. And then and, – and this is the thing that I found is that with the, these kinds of circumstances, it's um, – it's something that happens kind of like on a micro scale, you know, like daily things that just kind of throw you off. And then there's the bigger things. There's the bigger life transitions, the bigger challenges, the bigger situations, like whatever it is that also like really throw us in for a loop, right? Um, so I hear you. I totally hear you. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So excited to have you here as you're joining. Say hello. Let me know where you are tuning in from. Um, I'm so excited. And if you're watching me on the recording, you can just let me know in the comments below the video that you're watching me on the recording and also tell me where you are tuning in from. Um, but yeah, this is the thing. It's like, it's this whole thing where whether it's the micro moments, like in our day, day to day situation, like what I had yesterday, or it's like the big transitions and the big, um, the, the big moments in life that really throw us in for a loop and just kind of like can kind of throw us off our path is what it feels like. Right. And then it leaves us in this place where you're just like, what am I doing? <laughs> like what, what is happening right now? Right. And again, like I said, it's that self-defeating kind of feeling, right. Where you're just like, forget, forget this. Like, screw this, forget everything, like why, right? And so what I want to talk to you about today is how we can keep going despite those challenges. And how do you stay inspired? How do you stay connected to the greater divine path for yourself? How do you stay connected to your truth and to who you are and not allow those things that 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 happen that are a normal part of our human experience to throw you off completely where you, you know, like completely give up, for example, or where you just kind of like really get yourself into a spin and then it takes a few days to get yourself out of it. And then you kind of like have to motivate yourself back, right? Like takes a whole week sometimes <laughs> to kind of get yourself going again. So I want to have this conversation in a way where you are able to, um, you know, like face these things like experience them because there's no avoiding them, right? It's just part of life. There's no avoiding them. And, and then it's kind of like, you keep going, you keep showing up. And that's the big thing for, you know, especially when we're talking about our soul's divine journey and our purpose and what we're here to do and the greater divine plan and being able to really experience the fullness of life and the fulfillment of doing the work that you love and creating a life that you truly desire and really living in that flow and aligned space. It's so important to understand how to navigate these moments because we all go through these. Um, okay. I'm just going to check in with the chat real quick. Hello, everyone. So excited to see you guys. Um, 
Let's say we got Connecticut tuning in from Spain, but originally from LA. I love it. Um, from New Jersey. Yay. Hello, everyone. Feeling this hard lately, but also the poll. Yes, I totally, totally hear you. And um, and I and I found that in those moments, depending on on the situation, right? Because like I said, there's the micro moments that happen on a day daily basis, which like for me, for example, like I mentioned to you guys, I literally went through this yesterday where I was just saying that I was like, I feel so defeated right now. <laughs> like what is happening where it basically was a situation. So what for one, my, it took forever for my older daughter to get her ready and out of the house and go to school. Um, and like, that was just like, you know, those moments where you're just like, why are you challenging me on everything? <laughs> why are you questioning this? Like, why, why are we doing this today? Especially when it was like a, a day where I had all these plans laid out where I was like, I'm going to do this and this and this and this. And I had this like list and it, it literally like I took that list and I threw it out the window. <laughs> That's like what had to happen. Um, from that moment, like challenging moment in the morning. And then I had technology issues which was like so weird, so also frustrating where I was like, wow, I'm just trying to like do this stuff and like record things, you know, I was like trying to record for my podcast and it was not happening. Um, and just everything felt like it was delayed and took longer and just was like so just frustrating, you know, and again, this is what I would consider kind of like a micro moment because it was in that, you know, yesterday this happened yesterday and I was like messaging someone and I was just like I feel so defeated today <laughs> like what is happening <laughs> you know um and and it those moments happen and I witnessed myself going into a space where I was like I just want to like give up right now like I it was like this moment where I could feel my mind I could feel that part of me that was like just forget everything like you know, screw this. <laughs> like, why are we even doing this? You know? And I think we all go through those moments where we're like, why, 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 why? Right. And so I want to talk you through the three keys to help you to stay inspired and to help you just keep going despite those moments. Um, and then there's the bigger moments too, which if you join me for the Awaken series, I I um, just wrapped up this Awaken series, which was a free storytelling series where I, I basically shared, you know, a lot of the kind of like turmoil and transformation and insights and aha moments and this whole journey that I've gone through the past six months after the birth of my second daughter. And, um, and just going through the period of time of like really questioning, like, what am I doing? What am I here to do? Like, what is the path for me now? Right. And I know that a lot of you are going through that too, where there's this, you're, you're hitting this like edge or hitting this wall where it's, it's coming to a point of maybe it's not what, Maybe it's not about what I was doing before, but it's about stepping into something new, right? And so, so despite the challenge that shows up in those moments where it feels like nothing is working, where everything is falling apart, it's also how do you keep going? How do you stay inspired? How do you know that, th that there's something here and bigger for you? And how do you step into that, right? So this is everything that we're going to talk about today. Um, and you can apply it no matter if you're just having a hard day or you're having a hard month or six months of your life or whatever the situation is, okay? This is applicable in any of those contexts, okay? So so the thing that I just want to talk about really quick is that the first step here or the first kind of point of awareness here is that when you notice yourself going through that process where, like I mentioned to you, the example of like feeling very defeated and just wanting to shut down, it's important to, to witness that and, and to honor that and, and not make it wrong because I don't think that that's something, uh, a wrong kind of like, um, mechanism that we have because it really is like a defense mechanism. It's like when things are happening and it's all not working out, we just want to shut down. Like I could feel my energy just wanting to like close down, shut myself off. Right. And it's important to, to honor that part of us that, that, that wants that and that feels that, and that just wants to like hide because it is part of our, 
um, you know, humanness to want to protect ourselves and to, and like curling up, it's like that safety, you know, like whatever, whatever animals <laughs> in, in nature, like kind of do that, like curl up like that, right. To protect themselves. Um, I think of like, a uh, um, a turtle, like hiding in its shell, right. Like it just like, like it protects us from, from prey or from predators. I mean, so, um, it's kind of like one of those things where, you know, it's, it's a normal mechanism to want to just hide and to want to keep ourselves safe and to just do this. But what's also important to understand with that is when we completely close ourselves off like that, we completely are just like mad at the world, like, forget everybody. Like I'm so pissed off at you right now. You know, it also shuts us off from the truth of who we are. And it shuts us off from living in sync with the divine. And I think there comes a moment where we all get to ask ourselves, is this worth like, is me shutting myself off and like going into my little like hole, my little sanctuary here? Is it worth that cutting that off? You know what I mean? Is is it like in my righteousness to do that? Like, is it actually worth it? You know, because there is there is that 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 aspect of it where it's like, yeah, sure. Like, let's just do that. Let's go into that hole. Let's curl away from the world and shut everyone away. And then there comes a moment where it's like, but is it worth it still? Or, or is it, am I better off to open myself back up and see what divine solutions to see what divine perspective to see what the higher frequency is for me here to experience? You know what I mean? So that's just one thing that I want to bring your awareness to in this particular, you know, in the, in, in the context of what we're talking about today. So the first key in continuing on your path to stay inspired, to keep moving forward, to keep going. Okay. The first key is to see that you are a vessel, right? That you are connected to the divine and that you are meant to be expressed through. So the energy of God, of the angel, of the universe, of the divine, we are all connected to it, right? And so when we when we make a challenge or a hardship or whatever struggle situation means something about us, right? Like means something about us, like, oh, maybe I did something wrong. Maybe that means that I'm not good enough. Maybe it means blah, 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 blah. Then that immediately, it immediately creates this, like, we immediately separate ourselves, right? From the divine. So if we remove that meaning that we create, right? And it's like, you know what, this is a struggle that I'm going through right now, but it doesn't mean anything about me. It doesn't mean anything about who I am or what I'm connected to or what's possible for me or what I'm capable of. It doesn't mean anything about that. It's just a thing that I'm experiencing. Like, yes, I'm experiencing this. Yes, this is hard. <laughs> yes, this is a challenge, but it doesn't actually mean anything about me, right? So we have to, we, we, we have to separate ourselves from the meaning that we create around whatever struggle or whatever situation and understand that it doesn't mean anything in terms of our connection to the divine and our connection to who we are. And so as soon as we create that shift in our perspective that you see yourself as a vessel, right? Or as an extension of God, however you want to think of it as a vessel that the divine energy moves through you or that you are an extension of the divine whatever, you know, whatever way, whatever, um, kind of specific way that, that, that feels best for you, that really resonates with you. But the point is that you are a part of something bigger and that because you are a part of something bigger, you are taken care of that. You are, you are so loved and you are so supported and you are so taken care of, right. That you still belong. And I think that that belongingness is such a huge point for so many people, because for many of us, we've had experiences in our lives where we have felt like we don't belong, like, right. And, or we felt, we felt like we've been abandoned. We felt like, sorry, that was my water bottle. <laughs> we felt like we've been abandoned. We feel like we've, um, you know, been, been pushed aside. Like, like we don't matter that people don't care. And so when we, and so immediately because of that, because of whatever wounds and, um, trauma or whatever this, the thing is that, that really kind of 
has affected us, we immediately go to that like, oh, I must not belong to the divine, right? So the first key here is that you remember that you belong no matter what, that you are taken care of no matter what. You know that that this energy is something that cannot be disconnected, cannot be removed, right? We can simply just kind of dim it down or, um, you know, push it to the side. However, we always, 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 always have that free will and that choice to, to really honor it and, and be connected to it and allow it to come through. And so when we see ourselves as that vessel for the divine, that we see ourselves as part of this bigger um, creation, right? Or that bigger energy that, that moves through us, then it immediately kind of removes any sense of like, oh, I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. I don't belong here. I did something wrong. You know, whatever the thing is that, that we create for ourselves that kind of, um, makes us want to shut down. So, so that's the first step. And that's what really helps to open up your heart, right? It helps to open up your heart to like what I said, mentioned earlier, divine solutions, higher frequencies, um, you know, different perspectives around why something happened the way that it did. And then that is then where you get to really receive and integrate into the wisdom and into the lesson into, you know, whatever the nugget is that was meant to be received. That's where you really get to then actually receive it because now you've opened up your heart again and you recognize that it has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you, right? I mean, it has something to do with you because you're experiencing it, but the actual meaning behind it has nothing to do with because, you know, you did something wrong or whatever it is, right? So that's the first thing, okay? The first key is seeing yourself as the vessel, as, um, you know, fully connected and belonging to the divine. Okay. And in your belongingness, that is where you're going to open up your heart and see that there's something greater here. And that is meant to be moved, that you're meant to walk here through this process. Okay. So then the second key, the second key is really about the discipline in the sense of remembering the big picture, right? And the discipline in the sense of remembering your why and remembering why you're doing this in the first place, remembering why you're following this path, why you're doing what you're doing, why you um, decided to, you know, start, let's say a business or start a certain project or to begin to explore a certain area of your life coming back to your big picture why is so powerful and so important. I've talked about this before. If you're on my newsletter, you would have received this a few weeks ago um, where I talked about the power of our vision um, when it comes to manifesting, right? And being able to be connected to the bigger vision. Because if we disconnect from the big vision of what we desire, what is on our hearts, what we're feeling called to do, who we're feeling called to become, if we disconnect from that vision, then the manifestation process all of a sudden gets a lot harder because there's no big vision to hold it all for you, you know? Um, and so when, and this is very similar in the sense that having that discipline to be connected to your bigger picture, to your bigger why is what helps you to keep going and to keep showing up even when it feels hard, right? And so like the example yesterday that I shared about like all these things that went like, quote unquote, wrong, <laughs> or, you know, in other words, things that, that shifted and didn't go according to plan. Um, it was very easy for me to just be like, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna follow through or keep doing this or keep um, showing up in a certain way. And but I had to lean into this discipline of remembering my bigger vision and remembering what I was being called to do, like the deeper, the deeper foundation that was here, even though everything felt wobbly around me, right? And so it was because of that discipline that I was able to still show up and still, um, you know, do the things that I had to do post, like whatever, all the things that I had to take care of, to be able to show up and to be able to keep going. And so there are going to be some days where it's going to feel really hard and really heavy to put one foot in front of the other. And so in the, it's in those days where the discipline and remembering your bigger picture, remembering the bigger why is going to be so, 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 so important. Um, because that's where you remember that there's something greater 
that you're moving towards or something greater behind the scenes that is supporting you and that's moving you forward, you know? And so, and so that's where it's also important for us to look at, you know, again, going back to the self-defeating um, experience that we all go through in those moments is, you know, one of the, one of the experiences, at least this is what I've gone through. So let me know if you've <laughs> experienced something similar is that, you know, in those moments where I have those like self-defeating thoughts, it also somehow takes me out of the game in the sense of like, well, maybe this isn't meant for me, or maybe I'm not supposed to do that, or maybe this, maybe that, whatever, right? And it's like, why do we take ourselves out of the game? <laughs> why do we take ourselves immediately out of like the whole thing? And we're just like, nah, like maybe, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe whatever, right? So, so the discipline in, in the sense of like, being disciplined and connect, being connected to your bigger why, being connected to your bigger vision is going to help you to not take you out of the game when, when things go are, are challenging, right? It's going to help you to not just want to just be like, ah, maybe it's not for me, right? And that's because when we go through those questioning times and we start to doubt ourselves, that doubt, if we continue to you know, kind of entertain that doubt. And one of the ways that I've described this in the past is what is the energy that we dwell in, right? It's okay to have doubts. I'm not saying that we shouldn't have doubts because we we all do. And it's part of our human experience. But the question is, what energy are you dwelling in? Because if we are continuously day after day, after day, after day, after day, after day, months after months, you know, um, dwelling in the energy of doubt, dwelling in the energy of fear, dwelling in the energy of you know, um, you know, I should have done this or should have done that or whatever, then the energy that you're dwelling in is what's going to really uh, have a have a big influence on your energy and on your frequency and how willing you are to show up. So but when we instead of dwelling in a certain, you know, uh, in the doubts or in the fears or whatever, we instead notice that we're doubting see it. Okay. I'm doubting this right now. I feel this way, whatever. Let me lean back into my bigger vision and into why I'm doing this in the first place. Why I chose to show up in this way, why I chose to say yes to this calling, right? <clears throat> and all of the reasons as to why it's so important to you. When you lean into that, then that immediately, like, it's almost like, a like flips a switch. It's just like, completely switches you out of that dwelling in like the doubt and the fear and whatever. And it, and it starts to pull you out of that. And so the more that we can lean into it, again, like I said, this is a discipline. This is something that you have to practice. It's not something that comes like a second nature, <laughs> at least not right away. You know, it's something where you have to, it's that self-awareness that then you start to think about it. You start to bring yourself back from that. And, and then what happens is that you, you, you're connected back to your bigger why you're connected back to the bigger vision. And then that's, what's going to help you to keep going and to show up even when it feels hard. It's like, okay, I'm going to show up today because of this bigger vision, even though it feels hard, even though it feels terrifying, this bigger vision, it's going to hold me. And so that's what you'll start to see on your journey is that it's not necessarily about having no fear on your journey, because I think that as humans, it's part of our experience, right? However, it's how you walk with that fear, right? Like if, if fear is in the room here, how, how much bigger is your belief in your vision, in your sense of power, right? Your self-empowerment. Bigger than the fear, you're good. You're golden because the fear will feel minuscule compared to your overall sense of your empowerment and who you are, your belief in yourself and who you are. And that power will hold you and that fear right? The power has no problem holding the fear for you. Like the power is like, fine, it's fine. Like fear can come along with us, whatever. We're good. <laughs> We're going to keep going because this is the bigger vision. This is the bigger why. You know what I mean? So that's the thing that's important to understand too, is that it's not necessarily about let me eliminate all fear. Let me eliminate all doubt. Let me eliminate all of this like, uh, like uncomfortable feeling or like negative feelings. It's more about 
let me actually amp up my faith. Let me increase my sense of power. Let me increase this belief in who I am. Because when I increase those things, the fear and the doubts and the worries, they shrink. They shrink. They don't necessarily go away, but they shrink. And so then your power, your belief, who you are holds it all and and moves you forward. Do you see what I'm saying? And that sometimes feels a lot easier because if we're trying to just constantly get rid of fear, and I used to do this, I used to be like, I just need to get rid of all this fear and feel no fear. (laughs) And then I was like, wait a second, why am I trying to get rid of, I'm like just like putting so much energy into trying to get rid of this thing that keeps showing up. And instead of trying to make it that I can only feel empowered, or I can only have full faith and belief in myself if there's no fear, right? Like that's, that is um, very circumstantial. It's like, well, I believe in myself and I feel powerful as long as there's no fear. But if there's fear, immediately that shrinks. So instead, it was like, actually, how about I work on put all that energy that I was trying to do to push away the fear and push away the doubts. Let me actually apply that towards, um, you know, increasing my sense of power within myself right? My empowerment, who I am, my belief in who I am, my trust, my faith, like all of those things. Let me actually focus on that. And when I did that, like I said, immediately started to see how I can be with in the room with fear, but, but that energy, the power, the belief, the faith, all of that is much bigger. And that's what holds me. And that's what I lean into. And from there, the fear just shrinks on its own. And it's like, oh, that's a much better use of my energy and my time is to focus on that rather than trying to eliminate the fear. Okay, so that is number two. (laughs) That is key number two. It's that discipline, okay? Discipline in all of what I just said. Um, Yay, this is exactly what my journey needed today. I'm so glad. Yes, truth. I love it. Okay, so then number three. Okay. Key number three is, you know, looking at what is happening, like the the current situation in your life, whatever the thing is that, you know, the struggle, the challenge, the situation, whatever it is for you in this moment, right? The question that I want you to think about with this is how do I want to tell this story? Because the truth is that you are going to move through whatever it is that you're moving through right now. Like you are going to get to the other side. There is a, there is more right? And if you think back to any past challenges in your life, right? It's like, you can tell the story of how you move through the challenge. Like you move through the challenge, you move through whatever situation you move through, whatever hard day you had, like there was always another day and there's always this like next thing. So thinking of it as there's always a next chapter, there's always something more beyond this. It's just that when we're in the moment, We forget that and we only are like in this space where we're just like, oh my God, I'm strapped here. It's going to be forever, you know, and I remember this, um, you know, one of the the wisdoms that I've, I've really received as, as a mom and especially to young children is, you know, with your first one, you, you don't have the wisdom or the knowing of like the different stages, especially when they're babies. And it's like every stage has its beautiful moments and also has its hard moments and, You know, as a first time mom, I was like, oh my gosh, when will this be over? I don't know. Like you have no, you have zero like idea of how (laughs) things are going to, to uh, uh, happen or unfold or shift and change and whatever. But with the second one, it's like you have the wisdom. And I saw this one time on an Instagram post and I was like, that's so spot on. It's like you have the wisdom from your first that you know that every stage, every hard stage that, that that you go through you know, with little kids is that, you know, that they are not permanent, you know, that they're going to grow out of it, you know, you know, that every hard stage that you go through, and this is what I tell myself, anytime I have like, uh, like sleepless nights, you know, I have a six month old teething baby, it's like, we've had hard nights. (laughs) And, and I remind myself, I'm like, I know this isn't permanent, like, I know that this is going to shift, like, in a matter of days, because I know that this is not, this is only temporary. And so that's the same thing for us to remember, no matter what challenge we're going through, no matter what situation in life, life ebbs and flows, 
challenges are not permanent. Like they are temporary. We just don't know how long we're going to be in them for, right? We don't know exactly how long. We don't know how long it's going to take us to have a solution or to, to move through something or whatever. We, we don't know that. But what we can know for sure is that it's temporary and that there is a solution on the other side. And that if you're going through something, it's because God knows that you were, you, you're capable of moving through it, that you're meant to move through it because the strength, the power, the um, determination, the resilience, the truth, like whatever it is that you've been desiring for yourself, it is building your character. It's building you to be that person, right? To become that and through the struggle. So it's one of those things where when we look at whatever is happening in, in our life in that moment, how do I want to tell this story, right? In the sense of like, how do I want to remember like myself and showing up that no matter how hard it was that I kept going, right? That no matter how much I wanted to give up that I didn't, right? And that even when I had like the hardest day ever that I woke up the next day and I looked at the day and I said, this is a new day, you know? You know what I mean? So it's kind of like having those moments It's like full permission to just fully experience it all, but also to know that you get to get to keep going from here. You know what I mean? That there's a next chapter, there's a next, you get to turn the page, right? Like the the book is not ending. It's it's like we're still, we're still in the process of writing our story. So how do you want to write it? How do you want the story to unfold for you? You know? Um, and and so in that in that process, as we think about, you know what is currently happening in your life right now. You think about, you know, how do I want to tell the story? How do I want to show up for myself? That also, especially if you're someone like, this is the thing that I'll tell you is that especially if you are someone who um, either desires to either you have a business or you're working in some way where you're helping others, or you desire to, to step into that as like an entrepreneur, you desire to, you know, be of service to others. Maybe you're a healer. Maybe you're someone who wants to be, you know, like a spiritual teacher, a mentor, or a coach or whatever, right? Like, especially if you are in that space where you're either considering that or you are already doing that. What I have found to be really helpful is that I think about whatever, situation or challenge that I am currently going through. And I'm like, okay, how can I turn this into a teaching moment? Right? How can I turn this into a lesson? How can I take this like what I'm experiencing and, um, and use that to to help others. And like, literally, that is what happened yesterday. I was like, I announced this, this, <laughs> this masterclass. And then it was like everything just, you know, I had like a micro experience of that. And I was just like, Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> thanks, God, like we are going through this right now, so that I can show up and tell this story. And you know, like, just share with you that we all go through it in, you know, within a day, months, you know, weeks, whatever. So it's kind of like one of those things where you get to really use yourself as an example. And it doesn't even actually have to be in the context of like doing, you know, being of service or doing work or having a business or whatever. It could literally just be something that you use to help your friend or to help your kid or to help your your partner or whoever in your life that you can just be like, hey, listen, like I've been through this, or this is what I'm experiencing right now. And this is how I'm shifting out of it, right? So again, it's like, how do you want to tell the story? What is it that you want to what is the bigger thing experience here that you can then use as a teaching moment, you know, in whatever context to help someone, right? So when we think of it that way, I do believe that's why so many of us go through um, these experiences where like, at the end of the day, you know, we're all walking the journey together side by side, right? And so I I really love this, this visual that I've received many times where it's like, it feels like we're all just like walking towards, you know, the divine truth. We're all walking towards the bigger picture. We're all walking side by side, side by side. We all have had different life experiences, different situations, different challenges, different whatever. We all hold unique truths and all of those things. But at the end of the day, we're all just walking together. 
And so my story can help that person over here and that person's story can help that person over there and that person's story can help this over here. And blah, blah, and like, this is what we're doing. We're just walking together. But in our unique and individual experiences, we are helping each other. We're helping each other. We're like, hey, I know how that feels. You're not alone. And even just that feeling of you're not alone is so helpful, right? It's like, oh, okay, thank God I'm not alone. I thought I was the only one experiencing this thing. And then we realize that we're not. And we realize, oh, wait a second. Like I actually have people around me who get me. And sometimes it's all just about being witness and, and being understood, right? It's like, oh, you get me. You get me because you've been there. You get me because you've gone through something similar, right? Or I get you because I know exactly what you're going through. So I see you, right? And being seen and being understood and having those moments with each other is so, so powerful. And sometimes that's all it takes for us to get back up again. Sometimes that's all it takes. All it takes is for someone to just like, witness me and be like, Oh, okay. You see me. <laughs> okay. Like I'm going to keep going now. You know what I mean? Um, so, so that's the power of us being able to just look at whatever's happening in our life right now. And just asking yourself the simple question, like, how do I want to tell the story or what is the lesson here that I could, you know, in some shape or form, you know, translate in some way through my work or through my relationships or whatever. Right. Um, whatever fits best for you. But that's the whole thing here that also is really powerful to help you to keep going. Okay. So that is number three. Okay. So those are the three keys to help you to continue on your journey, despite the challenges, despite the hardships, despite the situations. So I want you guys to post in the chat. If you're watching me live right now, let me know what questions you have. Let me know what's coming up for you. Let me know what you're going through. I am going to have, I have some time to do a Q and A and to specifically um, share channel guidance with you all and kind of like help to point in the right direction or help you to see, you know, what, what angel can I call on specifically to support me with this? So if you have anything specific that you want to ask for your situation, feel free to post that in the chat. I will answer those comments. Um, and so while I wait for you guys to post that in, share your experiences, all the things, I want to share something really exciting with you um, that is officially opening today. And this is something that I don't even know, it just it feels like it was so divinely like, you know, like the analogy of like breadcrumbs <laughs> of like, oh, I'm just following the breadcrumbs. Like, I don't I don't really know where it's leading me, but like breadcrumb, 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 breadcrumb. And it's like this came to life. Right. And this is something that, like I said, if you especially if you've been following my Awakened series you know, there, there's been such a huge shift for me in my life um, in terms of like how I view myself and who I am and how I'm meant to show up and a deeper connection with myself, with God, with the angels and how I am, you know, how I'm being called to show up in a different way and being called to, to, to teach this truth. Right. And to me, that felt like such a big, like, that's why I call it awakened because it feels like I woke up, right? Like I was awakened to a deeper truth within me, a deeper truth in who I am, a deeper truth to, to what my greater purpose is and what, what God would have me do to be of service. Right. And so I believe that we all go through those moments of awakening. Like it is an awakening. And I, and, and I know that, you know, we talk about like the spiritual awakening, which is like when you first <laughs> woke up to this um, experience of spirit, the experience with the angels, experience with God, experience with your soul. And, and but I do believe that we go through um, the, we go through a series of awakenings is my my belief now, now that I've experienced this. And so, um, and so as we go through these awakenings, what I do believe is that especially if you are in a place of like a big life kind of like transition or big challenge or whatever, that it, it's a, it's like an initiation, right? It's an, an, an initiation into more of who you are an initiation into who you're meant to be an issue, a calling forward into more where maybe like what you were doing prior to that, as great as it might've been as fulfilling as it might've been as, you know, as great as, a, as the experience would have been, 
there's more that is being asked of you, right? There's more that you're capable of. There's a greater potential that is now meant to be expressed through you. And so I do feel like when we go, we hit a wall or we feel like we're on this edge of transformation, we're on this edge where it's like, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Like I feel, you know, for me, it was like, I have been, you know, quote unquote established in this field, in this industry for several years. And it was like hitting a point just a few months ago where I was like, what am I doing? What am I doing? And like, I have no idea what is happening and I don't know what, what's next. And, and then like just having that moment, right. Where you doubt everything and you doubt yourself. And, and, and what I realized through my own journey is that this was an initiation into really accepting my deeper, deeper, deeper calling into who I meant to be as an author, as a speaker, and really following the dr the bigger dreams for myself, right? And so um, for you, like going through that situation, whatever <clears throat> your specific situation may be, it is looking at it from that perspective of what is the bigger initiation that I've been being called into right now, right? So having said that, I have put together a course that is called Soul Awakening, of course, very fitting, because this is exactly what the journey is. It's a, the awakening of your soul. It's the in initiation into the next part of your journey, into the next experience of who you're meant to be. And so the Soul Awakening journey, the pathway that we walk through together is going all, starting from the challenge, right? And the hardship and the feeling of like, oh my God, what is happening? Transmuting that into actual power and fuel and strength for yourself. And then walking through the journey of releasing the old identity because we all cling to our old selves and our old identity because it's familiar and it's because it's like, well, that's like what I'm here to do, right? And it's actually when we're initiated, it's like, no, you have to let go of that old identity to allow the new identity of who you are to fully form. Because if we're still clinging on to the past and to the old or the things that are familiar, the things that work, the things that were comfortable, we're not going to allow the fully new to, to form, right? So it's going through releasing that um, in order to step into the new identity, understanding your true self, understanding how to nurture and grow this new version of you, this new identity to support you in then being able to express yourself, right? Coming into this expression, true expression of who you are, embodiment of who you are and showing up in that energy. So that's the journey that I walk you through. It's eight modules. We go through that whole experience. And then there's also pre-work that you're going to have where you're going to connect with your inner child. You're going to, um, you know, learn a deeper understanding of releasing expectations. <laughs> and then also it is about um, teaching you with um, going through a grounding experience and process for you. So this is a full thing, <laughs> that full curriculum, we'll call it, in supporting you in your soul awakening. And I truly deeply believe in this so much. I've been through it, as you know, um, and you know, it's, it's not the first time, but that this is definitely probably one of the most powerful awakening experiences that I've gone through. So I really um, want to support you if this is something that you are going through right now. And so right now doors are officially open as of today. Yay. Um, and they're closing on October 6th. So um, this is what's happening right now. It is currently at 40% off. Um, to be able to join. And this is this is a self-study course. So this is something that you get to do at your own pace. Um, and so this is, and then the modules are released on a weekly basis. So there is that accountability to, um, to, to, to help you to like actually go through it, right? So it's like weekly, you have exercise, you have integration time, you're able to post your comments inside of the course platform and all of that kind of stuff. But this is something that is really, really transformative for you if you know that you are on this path of being initiated and um, you're just kind of like, I don't really know where to go or what my next steps are. So that's where this course is coming in. So I'm going to post the link for that and then I'm going to answer your guys' questions. Um, I see your questions coming in. So I'm going to um, answer those right now after I post that. So all of the information and details are in the link that I just posted. Um, okay. So let me see what you guys are saying. Let me do this. Okay. Um, 
let me just pin this real quick. Okay. So that is pinned. You mostly answered all my questions with the four tips. Yay. Okay, Megan. Awesome. All right. So Lauren's saying I'm on a very recent awaken awakening and so open, willing and ready. I feel there is still a wall I'm banging into. I'm picking up the breadcrumbs. I'm trying to understand how I'm being called to show up. Okay. So I immediately, Lauren, I feel Archangel Gabriel, um, who is coming through for you. And I feel like it's kind of like, I feel that wall. So what he's showing me is I feel that wall that you're talking about, that you're banging into. And he's like, in this wall, there is a door. So it, it literally, it's very, really interesting because I feel like he is asking you to lean in. It almost feels like the wall is part of this resistance that it's like, it's like one and the same, you know what I mean? Like the wall is resistance, but then within that resistance, there's the door. So what he's asking for you to do is to actually lean in. Like, what would it feel like to lean into that wall right now? Whatever that wall is, what is that wall? Um, what is that wall? Like, what's the experience of it? What are you, what, what is the resistance that is creating that wall? And can you actually lean into it to receive whatever the wisdom is, whatever the, the understanding is, because it feels like as soon as you lean into it, the door is in it, if that makes sense, you know? So rather than it feeling like there's a wall here and you have to go in this direction, it actually feels like there's a wall here. And actually the more that you lean into what that resistance is, that's what's going to open up the door for you to move into it and like step into the other side of it. You know what I mean? So so that's what I feel. And I feel like Kendra Gabriel as the one who is um, supporting you with that. So you can, of course, call on him, ask him to like help you, lead you, guide you with that. But that's what I see you doing with his help. Okay. Um, oh, hi, Juliet. Oh my gosh. So good to see you here. My goals are starting to manifest more quickly and I'm hoping you can provide any additional guidance. Awesome. Okay. So I immediately feel Archangel Ariel coming through for you, Juliet. Um, and so what she is saying immediately here, how quickly can you believe? <laughs> so in, in the manifest more quickly, it's like, how quickly can you believe? So she is talking about the, this belief in the possibilities, but also it's like, how, how much will you believe? It's almost like to what extent will it feel like, you know, um, it's like this feeling of, I want to say crazy, but, but in the sense of like, am I crazy enough to believe in this? Am I crazy enough to believe that this is actually possible? Like that kind of thing. And then it's like, yes, yes, I am crazy enough to believe in that. Yes, I am crazy enough to actually think that this is, this is meant for me, that this is what I'm capable of, that this is what's possible for me. So that's where I see Archangel Ariel taking you and like really leaning into that is how quickly can I believe and how crazy am I willing to go <laughs> to, to believe in that, you know, and to believe that it's possible. And then anything that ever comes up that pops up, that's like, mm, no, you're too crazy for that. Or no, that's that that's, that's too much, you know, like you're going way over the edge. It's like, that's where you want to, um, shift those beliefs to, to lean into a deep, deep, deep sense of like fully believing that it's possible. And, and, and the way that you'll know that you're in the full belief of it is when you are living and you're walking and you're just like, as if it's already done. You know what I mean? It's like that experience where you are just like so much in the sense of like, whoa, it's already done. Like it's already done. And that's where that you meet that edge of craziness that I'm talking about, because it's almost like, whoa, like I'm being a little crazy right now because I'm acting like it's already happened, but it hasn't actually happened. You know what I mean? But it, but that's that's the level that Archangel Ariel is taking you into for the manifestation. You know what I mean? So so that's what, that's what she's uh, sharing with you, Juliet. Okay. So let me see. Yes. I'm currently going through a financial pickle. I have been applying for work, but getting no leads. I would love to know if there is any messages guided from the archangels. Okay. Archangel Michael right away is coming forward for you. Um, Libra 23. <laughs> I love your name by the way, because I think is, I think today, right? Is it today or is it tomorrow where it's officially Libra season? Uh, and I am a Libra. So I just 
love this season. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so Archangel Michael is the one who is coming forward. And I feel that he, like the immediate thing that he's showing me is that is you to keep going. Like, I feel the sense of like, keep going. You got to keep going. It's like that continued. It's, it's, um, it's very much connected to what I was talking about in terms of like, I think it was the second point that I made. I think the second key <laughs> that I was talking about earlier, which is, um, the discipline and you continuing to show up even when it feels hard, you know, so it's continuing for you to show up and continuing to like, um, be open to the opportunities and being open to wherever you're called to apply, wherever you're called to kind of like, you know, have conversations with people. If you haven't had that yet in the sense of, you know, Hey, like, do you know anyone who might be hiring or this or that or whatever kind of, um, you know, it might not be such an, as an obvious, like job application, like apply here, you know, it might be like word of mouth, like, Hey, I know someone who knows someone who's looking for this type of work. And like, you're the perfect match for it. You know what I mean? So it's the openness to the opportunities and that sense of like the discipline of the bigger picture and not giving up and, and the why, like why, what, why, like, where are you, what's the bigger thing with this? And that's where I also feel Archangel Michael is going to support you is, but beyond like the immediate, like, well, you know, financially you need to be supported. Like that's why I need to work. Aside from that, what's the bigger, what, what's beyond that? Because once that's taken care of and you're just like, okay, cool. I have an income <clears throat> where, where is this? What, where, where do you want to go with that next? You know what I mean? That's where I feel also the bit, the expansiveness of your vision, wanting to be stretched, so to speak, or for you to kind of zoom out to, to, to hold that from that bigger vision to then support you in the discipline in continuing and in it being beyond just like, well, I need to make an income because that's understandable. Of course, like we all need that. And what's beyond that, you know? So that's where I see you going with that. And, um, asking your King Michael to support you. Okay. Let me see here. All right. So Megan in Los Angeles, creating art for a new gallery. I create sacred geometry symbols and my art holds angel light codes that help earth grid work slash healing. What angel can help me stay in my truth? Oh my gosh. I love that so much. That is so incredible. Um, I see two angels. Actually, I see Archangel Metatron. Um, and he of course is like very much connected to sacred geometry, but I also feel Archangel Michael coming forward for you too, Megan. Um, so I feel both of them coming in to support you with that. And it feels like Archangel Metatron is there to, to help you. It almost feels like he's like almost, um, helping you with the sacred geometry stuff, but, but almost like taking it to the next level in a way is what he's showing it to me as, if that makes sense. It's, it feels like there's more for you to almost like he's like a mentor and he's like, Hey, like I'm going to show you in, in like, there's more for me to train you on and <laughs> like things like that in a way. Um, and then with Archangel Michael, it feels like he's there as a steady, like almost like that steady energy where it's like, um, the steady guide. He's like, this is the path. Like we're not veering off the path almost, you know, it's like the blinders, like we're not looking at, like, we're not going this way, not going that way. No, like shiny object syndrome or anything like that. It's like, this is the focus. I feel Archangel Michael helping you with that, where it's like, this is the thing. This is the focus. This is where we're going. Um, so yeah, that is so cool though. Let me know. I want to know more about what you're doing, Megan, because I am in San Diego, so we're not that far away. And, uh, I want to know this art and the new gallery and all the things. So if you want to like message me on Instagram or somewhere, um, I, I'm, I love this so much. This is so exciting. Okay. Um, hello everyone who is joining in right now. Um, okay, cool. Sounds good, Megan. Okay. Let me see uh, everyone's comments here. So, okay. I'm going to get to you, Bob, in a second. I'm just going to, um, read the other comments. You're so welcome, Lauren and Juliet and Libra. Yay. That's the Archangel I was calling. That's so awesome. Libra season is tomorrow. Yay. All right. 
I have Metatron right beside my desk. That's so cool. Awesome. You're welcome. Okay. So, all right. So there's Electra and there's Bob. So I'm going to answer Bob's first and then we're going to go to Electra. And if anyone is just joining in, if you do have anything that you want to ask, please feel free to post that in the chat. If you're just joining in, make sure you catch the replay um, because we just talked about the three keys to keep going despite challenges, despite resistance, despite circumstances that would have you feel like you just want to give up. Um, and if you are ready to take this to the whole next level to really walk through this initiation that you are being called into, into who you truly are and not just know who you are, but really fully live it to create the life that you desire to live, then check out the soul awakening program that is now open for just a couple of weeks. Yeah. I guess it's like two weeks. Yes. So that is what's happening right now. 40% off soul awakening program. Okay. Let's keep going. So, okay. So Bob, I've been receiving massive downloads lately. Is there some way of knowing and remembering what they are slash what they are for? Okay. So first of all, Bob, I really feel like this is past life related. I feel Archangel Jeremiah coming forward immediately for you. And so I would work with Archangel Jeremiah to support you with that. And there's a couple things that are coming through. The first thing is that what he's saying is that sometimes in the remembrance, um, it's almost like it's, I feel like it like trickles in, in the sense of sometimes you'll receive something and you're like, okay, cool. But like, this doesn't really make any sense right now. And it's okay. It's not supposed to make sense. Right. So the more that we try to make sense of something, sometimes we actually push the understanding of it further away. Sometimes it's about the drip <laughs> being drip this information. So if you ask like, okay, you receive like a certain you know, piece of information, let's say, and then you're like, okay, so what does this mean? And you're not really getting a clear answer, then let it go. That's the first step in that is just letting that go. Because that because the more that you try to push it, the more you're actually pushing it away. So that's the first step. The second thing is working with Archangel Jeremiah to help you in that asking of like, okay, show me what else I need to know more about need to know about this or help me to understand more about this. And I really feel like Archangel Jeremiah is, is asking for you to allow yourself to, it's almost like going through this in this flow type of energy where um, you know that the, that the deeper understanding is going to come. And so you're just kind of in this flow of receiving and then the next bit comes in, the next bit comes in. It's almost like you don't even have to try as hard as what it feels like. It just feels kind of like, okay, this is information. Okay. Thank you and help me to understand more when it's time and I'm willing and ready to receive this. And you know, you know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. And then more comes in and then more comes in and then you will understand the pieces as they come together. But I really feel like this is past life stuff. So you could do like a past life um, journey or like meditation if you wanted to, it, that could sometimes be um, a, a missing piece or a, a piece of the puzzle that will help to kind of bridge the gap between things. Um, but again, it's, it's that discernment and that fine line that you're walking where it's kind of the, the difference between I'm, I'm pushing to, to know the answer versus I'm just asking, but then I'm also open to receiving, you know what I mean? That is a fine line that we walk and it, it, it's, it's really a case of discernment for yourself to know that, um, you're, you're just like walking that line and I'm open and ready, but also I'm not going to push it. <laughs> so I hope that helps. Let me know. Um, but Archangel Jeremiah is definitely the one for you to, to work with. Okay. So Electra, can you tell me which angel works with me? I feel a presence. So, um, I feel Archangel Raguel, the main angel who's coming forward for you. And then I do feel Archangel Metatron. That's kind of like, secondary kind of like in the background is what it feels like it, when I whenever there's two angels actually this isn't always but sometimes when there's two angels that come through for people I I feel them sometimes as like the main one who's like at the forefront and then there's one who's like secondary kind of like in the background almost if that makes sense um so Raguel is the one who's in the forefront for you and then Metatron kind of in the background okay 
Let's see. Okay. I think I answered everyone's questions. Hi, Jamie from Scotland. So good to have you here. All right. So that is, looks like I answered everyone's questions. Yay. Uh, unfortunately, if you are watching the recording, I'm not going to come back and do like the specific channel guidance in the comments. However, if you do have any questions um, outside of like specific guidance for you, but just like questions about what we, talk, what we talked about, questions about soul awakening, feel free to post that in the comments below. Feel free to share, um, you know, the biggest takeaway for you in the comments below, all of that good stuff. I cannot wait to hear from you. I cannot wait to see you inside of soul awakening. Um, I'm telling you, like when, when I talk about the initiation and going through it as being the thing that really truly feels like it sets you free and it makes you come alive and it brings in this such a deep sense of inner peace and inner joy and just deeper connection fulfillment within yourself. I, I know that feeling because I'm <laughs> literally been walking it. Um, so I invite you to come inside of the soul awakening program. If you know that like you're being initiated and that this is your next step into really stepping into who you are and embodying that so you can create the life that you desire for yourself, have that, that bone deep faith in yourself and who you are, feel at peace, feeling at ease with the flow, with the connection to the divine and who you are, your gifts, how you're meant to be self-expressed in this lifetime. So I cannot wait to see you there. Uh, you are so welcome. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer one more because I see the one from Aunt Karen. Um, Archangel Uriel is the one who's immediately stepping forward for you. So call on Archangel Uriel. Yay. You are so welcome, everyone. I'm so glad that you guys enjoyed this. I'm so happy that we did this. I missed you guys on YouTube. It's been so long. So that is it for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here and your beautiful questions and your beautiful energy and all of the things. I cannot wait to see you again very soon. I'm sending you so much love and angel blessings. Bye.